Good evening, everyone. Um, this is the meeting for the Wayne Westland Board of Education brought to order on um, Monday, October 15th of 2018 at 7.03 p.m. On behalf of the Board of Education, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here. Your attendance this evening shows your interest in public education and is greatly appreciated. At this time, we're going to start with item number 157.18, which is our Pledge of Allegiance. So if I can have Justin Burley, Tyja Burley, Constantine Matthew, and Lucien Matthew from Taft Galloway come to the front, please. They're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. going to read your bio and tell the audience about a little bit about each of you and then we'll have a certificate for you from the Board of Education. <laughs> you don't want to stand up so you can get your shine? You're on TV. Let everyone see you. My name is Lucien from the world's greatest elementary school, home of the Taft Tigers. This year, I'm in the fourth grade and Miss Rhea is my teacher. My favorite thing about being at Taft is being a safety. Oh, love safety. I love to help the younger students. I love going to Taft because my friends are really nice to me. My favorite food is bacon cheeseburgers with extra onions. Okay, who's Lucien? Okay, you gonna stand up? <laughs> okay. I enjoy playing soccer and basketball. I would like to thank my mom, dad, four brothers, two sisters, and uncle for being an amazing family and being there for me. My name is Taja. Taja. From the world's greatest elementary school, home of the Taft Tigers. This year I'll be in the fourth grade and Miss Thorner is my teacher. My favorite thing about Taft being a Taft Tiger is having a privilege to be a safety and help people, especially our kindergartners, because they need it the most. I feel like a big sister to them. My favorite color is blue because I like all pretty colors of blue. For example, the sky is blue. In my free time, I like to play with my brothers. I would like to thank my mom, dad, and my two brothers, Justin and Jacob, because they always have high hopes for me. And my name is Justin from the world's greatest elementary <laughs> school, home of the Tab Tigers. This year, I'm in the second grade, and Miss Mills is my teacher. My favorite thing about being a Tab Tiger is having a great teachers and meeting new friends. When I first started at the school, I only had one friend. Now I have a ton of friends because everyone is so nice to me. I like my teachers because all of the teachers teach us new things every day. <clears throat> my favorite color is gold because I like how shiny it is. <laughs> At my home, I play catch with the football. I would like to thank my mom, dad, brother, and sister. And the last one is my name is Constantine from the world's greatest elementary <laughs> school, home of the Tab Tigers. I'm noticing a theme again. <laughs> <laughs> this year I'm in the first grade and Miss Patella is my teacher. My favorite thing about being a Tab Tiger is having amazing teachers, especially Miss Patella and Miss Bullock. My favorite food is Burger King. I love Burger King myself. <laughs> when I am at home, I like to play my Nintendo Switch. I would like to thank everybody at the school and everybody in my family. I also want to thank my two best friends, Casey and Eva Ray. Okay, so you're gonna stay right there. Ms. Hines is gonna come down. She has a certificate for each of you. Madam President, while we're uh, waiting for Ms. Hines, can you do the floss for us? You were doing... <laughs> okay, good job. Good, good job, yeah. man.
So on behalf of the board, we'd like to thank you guys for doing the Pledge of Allegiance for us. And Justin, can you tell me who your parents are? Did they come with you today? Okay, did your principal come with you? <laughs> I can't believe how shy you guys are. This is your I moment know. to shine. I mean, I don't shine. Shine! <laughs> yes! So here's our award. It comes here, Justin. Here's your award. Here. And then we have, is it? Taisha? And Taja, did you bring any family members with you today as well? Yeah. Your mom and dad? Are they in the audience? Right there? Same mom. <laughs> your Same principal. Mom <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can come with your award here. <laughs> and we have a Constantine. And did you bring your family members with you today? Your mom and dad? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you don't? And Lucian, come with your award. You brought your parents as well? Yes. You guys are brothers. You guys look fine. You say nothing else. Thank you. And if you go stuff with Jenny, she will take you in the hallway and you guys can have a picture. Mrs. Hines, I think there might be somebody else that's special in the audience that they brought that they forgot about. Who? Mrs. Thorner. Mrs. Thorner! <laughs> So the, um, the students are going to get their picture taken in the front just to the parents. You're more than welcome to stay for the meeting, but if you have other things, you're, it's okay to leave too. We don't get offended when you leave after your kids <laughs> get their awards. <laughs> but thank you for taking your time out to bring them um, to the meeting this evening. All right, so we're going to move on to item number 158.18, roll call in attendance, Ms. Hines. Mr. Cox is excused? Yes. Mr. Buckaloo? Present. Dr. Weaver? Present. Ms. Hines, Ms. Madison? Present. Ms. Medell? I'm here. Ms. Walker? Yes, present. Let the record show 6-1? Six, six, um, six in attendance. Oh, six in attendance, okay. Six zero. Okay, thank you. We have a quorum. Moving on to item number 159.18, citizen comments, agenda items only. This is for comments <coughs> on agenda items. Anything that has to do with the agenda, this is your time to speak now. We have anyone? Okay. Sweeping the room twice. All right. Moving on to item number 160.18, consent agenda. Um, at this time, I'll take a motion. Move approval. Okay, moved by Dr. Weaver. Second. Moved and is supported by Mrs. Medell. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Medell? Yes. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. 6-0. Thank you. Motion carries. Moving on to item number 161.18, human resource items. Um, Ms. Simmons. Oh, do we? Oh, no. No, no. I'm sorry. Come here. That ain't even, I don't know. I done made up a number and everything. <laughs> 162.18 Board of Education Committee reports. We'll start with Dr. Weaver. Do you have the first one? The, the first. Okay. Yes. yes. These are the Finance Committee reports. All right. Um, I'm not sure it says this is to replace Finance Committee meetings on 21. Um, should I read both of these? Um, the one from. I've got one October October 5th. 5th is the one. No, right. I'm sorry. October 9th and October 5th is yes, what Yes, October I have. 5th is the one that you will be reading. Finance Committee meeting October 5th, 2018. Meeting called to order at 10.04 a.m. by Superintendent Holt. <coughs> Present were Superintendent Holt, Tom Buckaloo, David Cox, Fred Weaver, Stacy Witt, Tony Spizak, Carrie Matzik, Judy Wright, Greg Van Kirk, Paul Vialt, Ahmed Beasley, and Paul Wills. 
The Finance Committee met with the team from Plant Moran Cressa, who is working for us on the 2018 bond project. Progress and obstacles were discussed, as well as some challenges we may have moving forward. The Finance Committee, along with Plant Moran Cressa, are in agreement that the success of the 2018 bond is our main goal. A follow-up meeting will be held with Mr. Van Kirk. The meeting was adjourned by uh, Superintendent Holt at 11.39 a.m. Thank you, Dr. Weaver. And the second report will be read by Mrs. Medell. These are to replace the minutes that can be found on page 22. Finance Committee met on October 9th, 2018. The meeting was called to order at 8 o'clock in the morning by Superintendent Shelley Holt. Uh, present were Dr. Shelley Holt, Superintendent David Cox, Board of Education, Carol Medell, Board of Education, Stacy Witt, Assistant Superintendent, Tony Spizak, Executive Director of Maintenance and Operation, and Greg Van Kirk from Plant Moran Cressa. Uh, this was uh, owner's representation uh, from Plant Moran Cressa. The Finance Committee met with Greg Van Kirk from Plant Moran Cressa, one of the partners who is working with us on the the 2018 bond project. Discussions on Plant Moran Cress's responsibilities to the district and the service they provide Wayne Westland Community Schools so far and moving forward in the 2018 bond owners representation services. The Finance Committee decided to put the bid out for owner representation again and ensure that it was sent to any and all firms interested in submitting a proposal. This will occur by November 12th board meeting, interviews and clarifying questions for the, for the three construction <coughs> manager proposals will also occur by the November 12th board meeting. The meeting ad was adjourned by Dr. Shelley Holt, superintendent at 8.35 a.m. Thank you, um, Mrs. Medell. Moving on to item number 163.18, now review and approval of human resource items, Ms. Sims. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I present to you for review and approval um, as principal of John Glenn High School, uh, Mr. Michael Wager. Um, his data sheet can be found on page 23 of the board packet. Mr. Wager possesses a bachelor's degree in secondary education and history from Central Michigan University. Um, as well as a social studies endorsement from Wayne State University and a master's degree in school principalship from Central Michigan University. He has served as a social studies teacher, a middle school assistant principal, and currently serves as a high school assistant principal with Taylor Public Schools. Okay, at this time I'll take a motion. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Uh, Ms. Hines, any, dis any support? I'll support? Supported by Mrs. Medell, any discussion? Any discussion? Roll call vote please. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Let the record show 6 0. Thank you. Motion carries. Is Mr. Wagner in the audience? Yeah, right here. Fire up Mr. Chip, huh? Right <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Wayne Westman family. If you'd like, um, you can go yeah. to the mic and. All right, I would like to uh, thank the Board of Education and the administration of the Wayne Westland Community School District for placing their confidence in me to be the next principal of the world's greatest high school, <laughs> John Glenn High School. Giving me great pleasure to join the Wayne Westland family. I am extremely excited at this time to lift off and lead John Glenn High School into a new era of rocket pride. Thank you one and all for this tremendous opportunity. Did you bring anyone with you today? Sorry? Did you bring any family with you today? Absolutely. My wife Kelly is over here. My sons Dominic and Benjamin are with me as well. Thank you. Welcome. Um, item B, please. Great. Thank you, Madam President. I present to you for review and approval uh, for Principal of William D. Ford Career Technical Center, Ms. Jennifer LeDuc. Her data sheet can be found on page 24. She possesses a bachelor's in education um, with Spanish and business from Central Michigan University, a master's degree in science and educational leadership from Concordia, 
an ed specialist degree in educational leadership from Central Michigan University, and she is currently pursuing an education doctorate in educational leadership from Central Michigan. She has held positions um, with Lake Norman High School as a high school Spanish teacher, um, Algonac Elementary School as an elementary Spanish teacher, Grosseal Township as an advanced Spanish teacher, Wyandotte Public Schools Instruction and Assessment Coordinator, and currently serves as the Director of Career and Technical Education with Monroe <laughs> Country or County Intermediate School District. Okay, thank you. At this time, I'll take a motion. So, so moved. Um, moved by Ms. Hines, supported by Dr. Weaver. Any discussion? Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Hines, yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. But the record shows 6 0. Thank you. Motion carries. Ms. LaDuke? Yes. Hi. Another chip. Yay! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Wayne Westland family. <coughs> Good evening and thank you as well. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and to speak with you all tonight. Uh, this is a great opportunity for myself and one that I appreciate for the board. Thank you for this opportunity. I actually spoke with a former uh, principal in this position, Steve Kay. We had a great relationship as well, so I know this is a big role as well and something that I'm very fortunate to be part of knowing that a community here supports career and technical education without having a millage in this area. So I know there's great history here and I look forward to continuing that at William D. Ford. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I'm assuming you, not tonight. Unfortunately, I think we have the flu in our home. Oh, well, I'm glad you left them at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome again. <laughs> Item C, please. All right, thank you, Madam President. I present to you for review and approval um, for principal of Tinkham Educational Center, Ms. Kimberly Milstead. Her data sheet can be found on page 25. Ms. Milstead um, possesses a bachelor's in special education plan program from Eastern Michigan University, a master's degree in special education and inclusion specialist from the University of Michigan, and um, is currently pursuing her administrative certificate from through Eastern Michigan University. She has served um, in uh, several special ed um, positions, including self-contained and resource room teacher for Highland Park Public Schools, self-contained and co-taught cognitive impaired teacher in Ypsilanti Public Schools, East Detroit Public Schools is a self-contained cognitively impaired teacher, a learning specialist with Henry Ford Academy, Crosscat teacher for Ann Arbor Public Schools, and most recently has been serving as a teacher consultant with Wayne Westland Community Schools at Tinkham. Okay. Thank you. At this time, I'll take a motion. So moved. Moved by Ms. Hines. Any support? Support. Support by Dr. Weaver. Any discussion? Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. As the record shows, 6 0. Thank you. Motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How are you? I'm not a chip. I know, but we. That's okay. We have some Eastern, we have some Eastern Michigans up here, too. Right. <laughs> um, so, first, I just want to say that. Tinkham is actually the world's greatest high school. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first I would like to thank the board, Dr. Holt, Dr. Townsell, and everyone on the interview <laughs> committees. Um, what a great opportunity just to go through the process and um, have it come out this way. Um, I also want to thank my family who's here and my fiance who have supported me through my whole career. Um, I know they're going to support me through this journey as well. Um, I also want to Last but not least, thank my Tinkum family, who is, they came to support me yes. um, uh, for their dedication to Tinkum. They're as dedicated as, as can be. Um, I'm honored to be a part of the Tinkum team, and it's my goal to make Tinkum the very best, best place to grow and learn as young adults and contributing citizens. So thank you again. Thank you. Congratulations on the new position. So we're going to move on to item number 164.18, review and approval for board policy revisions. Mrs. Medell. I'm going to read all of this. Um, well, they're, they're, they're like, they're just they're short. short. Yeah, they're short. Okay, because okay. otherwise we're going to be here all night no. and pull out the pillows. 
Okay. <laughs> all right, first of all, we're gonna start with student code of conduct. The superintendent in consultation with the board and other school district personnel will develop and implement a, an, an legally compliant student code of conduct. The student code of conduct will apply to student behavior on school premises while en route to and from school, at school district related events, as well as off campus behavior. To the extent the off campus behavior is likely to or does substantially disrupt district academic or extracurricular activities or programs, or to the extent the district is legally required to consider the off campus behavior, such as criminal, sexual conduct, and cyberbullying. So right before we go any further, just so everyone understand that um, we had about like a, maybe a year, two years ago, we redid our yeah. policies. Um, and so part of the policy uh, contract that we have is that any time that the state comes up with any new rules or anything changes within our policy, that um, Lusk Alberson will update our policies. And see, these are some of the policies that have been updated um, recently. And so we're changing them or adding to the policy, so just so everyone understands. So at this time, we'll take a motion for the student of student conduct policy. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Hines. Second. Okay. Supported by Mr. Buckaloo. Any discussion? Yeah, is this the language that Les Albertson is suggesting and recommending to us? Um, yes. These all were given from Lux, Lux Alberson to update our policy. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Let the record show 6 0. Thank you. Motion carries. Madam President, yes. if I could interrupt for mm -hmm. a question, would it be possible, please, to read these into the record um, and um, contain one vote for them all? Um, but it's, it has to be done individually. It has to be done individually? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it would be that. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. It's not that many. We hope. Is there a way that we can just say what, let, well, let's say this. Do we have to do the summary? Does anyone know? Or can we just do with the title of the? My understanding <coughs> when I called was that all we had to do was resolve that the board approve the revised board policy and amend item B as presented is all that has to be read Okay, so okay, so we can do it that way. Okay, so you don't have, you don't have to, to read you that. You can just right, do read the, the whole thing. language. Okay, all right, good. As, as long good as enough. this is Lusk Albertson just giving us new terminology. That's all it is. Okay. Yes, it's, Thank you. it strictly came from them. So, um, if you wanted to go into details. Uh, well, this was also reviewed at the policy committee uh, meeting. We <coughs> read the notes out for us. So every one of these was approved by the policy committee before it comes to the actual board meeting. Mm -hmm. And then once the board meeting, the <coughs> board has to approve them once the policy committee recommends them to come to the board. Okay. And this, like, again, once I said, this is came part of the, of the, okay, Your B. So you don't have to, we can just say as, as it's written, as recommended for each one. Okie dokie okay. then. Um, although I'm a little confused because A reads about the same as this B. This B, yeah. It's a part two of the student code when I okay. went through it. All right, because it it's a little confusing. I don't know why they separated it, but yeah. Okay. So the next one is, a, again, a part of the student code of conduct, and we need a resolution. Or, I'm sorry, we need a... So at this time, we'll take a motion to the second part of the student code of conduct. It looks like it does read exactly the same, exactly. so I don't know if they just did it twice, but we're going to vote because it was the same as the first. So moved. Moved by Mr. Uh, Dr. Weaver. Any support? Second. Supported by Mr. Buckaloo. Any discussion? Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Let the record show 6 0. Thank you. C, please. All right, the next one is an uh, to update policy 3002 and 3000.02, which is parent involvement. Okay. So at this time, we'll take a, a motion to um, resolve that the board approve the revised board policy to amend item C as presented for student invo or parental involvement. So moved. 
Uh, motion moved by Dr. Weaver. Any support? Support. Support by Mrs. Medell. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Medell? Yes. Mr. Buckaroo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Let the record show 6 0. Thank you. Motion carries. Next one is illegal conflict of interest, and this pertains to uh, school district employees. Okay. How. Uh, Question: how, how so? What uh, what is this about? Um, go ahead and read that one into the record, uh, so that. All right, school district employees and agents are prohibited from engaging engaging in any illegal conflict of interest as determined by state law. Okay, that's really vague. Mm -hmm. But the state law is more specific as to mm. what they consider to be conflict of interest. Okay. So this was one that was brought, that we had to change because the state law changed. <coughs> um, at this time, I'll take a motion. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Medell. Support. Support by Ms. Hines. Any discussion? Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Let the record show 6-0. Thank you. Motion carries. Next one is prohibition of referral or assistance. This is district employees, board members, and school officials. And this is another one that falls under the code. Um, provide school code. Uh, the provide school code um, on instruction of sex education. At this time, I'll take a motion. So moved. Moved by Dr. Weaver. And, so, I'm sorry, uh, supported by Ms. Hines. Any discussion? Yes, so that is the exact language that Lusk Alperson recommends us use. My concern is with all of our changes, the whole point of why we had done our whole policies to begin with in the revision was to minimize the details. Okay. The but, but unfortunately, the state law changes all right. the time, so I just we have to comply. That that is the language. Yes, it came straight from Lusk Alberts. It was presented to us from the attorneys this way. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Medell? <coughs> yes. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Let the record show 6-0. Thank you. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Let's see. That was, um, as F that was E, so now we're on F. Uh -huh. Okay. This one uh, is in reference to firearms and weapons. So at this time, we'll take a motion. So moved. Moved by Dr. Weaver. Support. Support by Ms. Hines. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Let the record show 6 0. Thank you. Motion carries. The next one is district support organizations. This has to do with uh, support of members of the community. Okay. At this time, we'll take a motion. So, support. So, so move. <laughs> okay. So moved. Um, moved by Ms. Hines. Any support? Second. Supported by. Mr. Buckaloo, any discussion? Discussion. Okay. Um, <clears throat> district sanction support organizations. Um, so is there now something in place to certify these organizations or is that coming? Do anyone know that? Yeah, we, we have to develop the Go policy. Ahead. It says right there to develop the policy and implement the regula regulations to carry out this policy. So there could be some organizations that are not deemed worthy? We, no. Do not comply with the outline for qualifying as a sanctioned yes. support organization. Okay. So, so it's outlined in, the by, in their bylaws, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Hines, yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. 
Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Of the record show 6-0. Thank you. And the final one is um, H, please. On advertising and distribution and posting of advertising. Um, at this time, I'll take a motion. So moved. Moved by Mr. Buckaloo. Any discussion or uh, support? Support. Support by Mrs. Medell. Any discussion? Mr. Buckaloo. Yeah, I recognize the need for all of these changes to our policy, but I can't help but be saddened somewhat by the fact that we really need to do this sort of thing today. It, uh, it's a bit troubling, uh, necessary, but I wish we didn't have to do stuff like this. Yeah. Any other discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines? Yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. I mean, Ms. Ms. Walker? Yes. At the record show 6 0. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, so now we're going to move on to item number 165.18, the Head Start Monthly Report. Mrs. Medell. Okay, in front of you, you have uh, the end of the year cost report. So this, uh, we have not received August or September, and we're coming close to the end of October, but hopefully we will get everything settled around over at Head Start, and this information will come to you soon. So will we be voting on this one that you have here? You'll be voting on this one okay. that we received for the end of the year report. So at this time, we'll take a motion to accept Mrs. Medell end of the year expense report from um, Head Start. So moved. Um, moved by Ms. Hines. Any support? <laughs> support by Mrs. Medell. <laughs> Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Ms. Hines, yes. Ms. Madison? Yes. Ms. Medell? Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Let the record show 6-0. Thank you. Motion carries. Moving on to item number 166.18, superintendent report, Dr. Holt. Thank you, Madam President. A few announcements. One, we have our Wayne Westland Community Schools job fair that we'll be having tomorrow right here in uh, the Dyer Center. And we are hiring for a multitude of positions, mostly support positions and teachers. We have custodians, bus drivers, food service, uh, teachers and paraeducator positions. So if folks are interested, we encourage you to come by tomorrow, um, Wednesday, October, or no, goodness gracious, what day is it? Monday. So it's Tuesday, uh, October 16th, here at the Professional Learning Center so that we can um, help you apply for some of these positions and we can get some great folks on board. Um, as of this evening, all of our administrative positions are filled and I do want to give some kudos to the ECGR department uh, because this year they did a Herculean effort to ensure that all of our positions were filled. And what many folks don't realize is that on top of filling our normal positions, um, I created several positions that also had to be filled. And so we had additional instructional coaches, we have behavior coaches, we have parent liaisons now in our schools. And so they have done an amazing job um, at getting all of our positions filled. So that's a very significant uh, celebration. So thank you, Ms. Simmons, well done. Um, we are in the midst of creating our policies and procedures at the district level and our routines at the building level, um, or policies and procedures at the building level as well. So please know that a lot of our policies <coughs> and procedures here in Wayne Westland are being adjusted uh, to shift with the times and the board policies are just one part of it. Anytime we shift board policies, we have to shift administrative regulations, which then shifts district policies, which then shifts the building routines. So it all you know, <coughs> kind of trickles. Um, so today, this is very significant that we had so many. Uh, so that work is to come. Also for families, uh, data conversations are starting. And if you have not seen this chart, which is a map uh, to ACT and SAT comparison, I have several copies up here for anybody that wants one, but we can begin to predict um, how well our children are doing as early as third grade given their NWEA MAP scores. And so it's broken out into several categories, meaning open enrollment universities, state universities, top public universities, and Ivy League universities. And what are the scores needed on uh, MSTEP 
to correlate with the score on ACT or SAT <coughs> that your student is looking for. Uh, I've used these with my own children um, and several students over the course of my career, and this is an excellent predictor tool. So those conversations are happening um, with the principals this month and the teachers in the uh, building, and that means it'll be coming home soon to you. So if you have not seen this, um, it's on the website. You can get one from your uh, school office. You can always get them down here at central office. Uh, I keep a few on my fridge just to remind uh, my kids when they set their goals what it is that they're really shooting for. And um, it just helps them to focus their efforts, especially on NWEA exams, which many of our teachers will tell you they struggle sometimes to get our kids motivated to take because it doesn't always count <coughs> for a grade. Um, so when we used to ask, does it count for a grade? And you know, remember how you teacher would say no and you'd be like okay no big deal well it is a big deal for us because we are looking at how our children are progressing over time so uh, please be on the lookout for that uh, information also a reminder this is our final meeting before our upcoming bond proposal which we do want to ensure we get everyone out to rock the vote on that and to ensure that we are able to provide facilities that are uh, commensurate with what we want to have in our community finally um, I would be remiss not to speak to some of the uh, challenges that have come up with our children on our buses. Uh, I cannot ignore uh, what's happening on our buses. And I want to ensure that everyone understands that riding a bus to and from school is a privilege, not a right. It is a privilege, not a right. And we are currently working with our law enforcement officials and our parents in the community to ensure that we understand that our children need to be safe on the bus. So I encourage you, if you are one of our parents who has a child on the bus, have a conversation with your child about their conduct when they are on the bus. We are right now adjusting our district policies to ensure that we are able to enforce um, students that are not following these policies will not be riding the buses. And that's not just a suspension for a couple of days. That means that getting your child to and from school is going to be your responsibility as a parent if you, your child cannot behave themselves on the bus. The expectations on the bus are simple. You come into the bus, you have a seat, you take the ride, you, you do not put your hands, body, feet, or fluids outside the window or on anybody else. You get up at your appropriate stop, you walk down the aisle, down the stairs, say goodbye to the bus driver, and you go on your merry way. It is that simple. Anything less than that is unacceptable on our buses. Uh, we will protect our students on their way to and from school, but we need parent support to do this. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Holt. Um, moving on to item number 167.18, citizen comments, not agenda items. Do we have anyone? Are you getting up to leave or getting up to speak? Getting up to leave. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate you. Any comments? Okay. Moving on to item number 168.18, review and recommendations, Board of Education. We'll start on this end. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. We're going to go back to 167.18. Please state your name um, and your address, and then if give your information to one of the secretaries so that, because we don't answer you right away, just so that you can get your question answered, okay? Okay, I really, well, my question is very simple. First of all, my name is Michael Young. I am, um, we reside at uh, 30602 Avondale. My granddaughter is um, Ariana Burroughs, who was attacked on one of your buses. Um, there is a video of it, now. it is online, and it was also presented on the news. Um, my question is um, three parts. One, what protocol or um, things that were presented to the bus drivers to ensure safety? Because in our particular case, the bus driver uh, just kept driving to the next stop. Hold on one second, sir. I'm going to stop you just for a second and just remind you, um, just be mindful of names because you're, it's televised and I just want for your own protection and safety. Um, for the kids. For the kids involved and things not to give out things that might go against It's a little late for that, fun. but okay. Okay, but I... <coughs> it's right. a little late for that, but okay. okay. But uh, to I'm continue... Just for your protection. Just, just wondering what... Um, what action was taken involving the buses and the safety on the buses. That's the first thing. 
The second thing is um, we're kind of concerned about the intervention of a parent. Uh, we'd like to know who that parent was because we'd like to thank that parent. Um, and finally, we would like to know what changes you make in the code of conduct as well as especially in terms of uh, the buses and what um, changes you may make in terms of ensuring safety on the buses. Uh, the bus that our, we have four students that ride the buses from, uh, to Westland, Wayne Westland schools. And uh, we, <coughs> our students have uh, experienced racial intimidation, um, all kinds of harassment, bullying, and as you well know, physical uh, uh, attacks. So we'd like some type of, um, uh, we'd like to be informed about what changes and how they're implemented and whether they'll be implemented. And, you know, I mean, right now it's smoke and mirrors because all we hear is, oh, well, we're changing such and such a policy. Okay, fine. How do we know what those changes are and what those policies are? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. Anyone else in the in the audience? Anyone else? Okay. okay. Moving on to item number 168.18, Review and Recommendations, Board of Education. Mr. Buckaloo, we'll start with you. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Cox for bringing us Justin and Taja and Constantine and Lucian, getting us off to a great start today. And I'd like to congratulate our new hires, Mr. Rieger, uh, Ms. Leduc, and Ms. Milstead. And by the way, Ms. Milstead, the Hurons, or are they the Eagles? They're the best. <laughs> I don't know where all this nonsense about yeah. the Chippewas came from. <laughs> um, my hat is off to the people who've been doing the hiring, uh, filling the vacancies. That's, that's a problem that we haven't had in years past. So many vacancies, so many people leaving us at the last minute. And I know the reasons for that. Number one is we don't pay our employees enough and we need to address that. And there isn't anybody in this room that would disagree with that. And having said that, I should point out that no money from the bond can be used to address that, that wage increase. So. Mm -hmm. The bond is a separate fund, so don't, don't make that mistake. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. The other reason that we're having difficulties in hiring people is the attacks that have come out of Lansing on the education prof profession in the last few years. The loss of tenure, the loss of prestige, uh, some of the testing issues uh, have made the profession less inviting that they've been, than they've been in years past. And we need to address that somehow. Uh, and we need to take the burden off of our, um, our folks doing the hiring. So I thank you all again for all of that. Um, and that would do it for me tonight. Thank you, Mr. Buckaloo. Mrs. Hine, or Mrs. Madison. Today I was reminded of a couple of little quotes that I wanted to start out tonight's meeting with my comments on. The first one was, customers don't expect you to be perfect. They do expect you to fix things when they go wrong. That was Donald Porter, Porter the VP of British Airways. <coughs> the next quote that I came across today at work was, statistics suggest that when customers complain, Business owners and managers ought to get excited about it. The complaining customer represents a huge opportunity for more business. That Zig Zagler. Those two things really struck deep with me today as I sat there reflecting as my term is coming to an end on school board. And I sit here and wonder for the past almost, well, five years, going on six, that I served, reminding myself of why I put my name in the hat to even run for election. Not knowing many people in the community, but having a big heart for the community. I ended up with over 14,000 votes. I sat here humbly for five years, never once boasting or bragging 
are letting that take the better of me. But today I'm reminded that over 14,000 people did vote for me. They did vote for me to be their voice. Others who didn't vote, I am still their voice. With that being said, there's some things that I would like to share with my board as my time comes to an end. Over the past five years, I've never been the deciding vote. I never wanted to be the deciding vote. I'd always hoped that we would work together as a team, that we would serve for the same goals, the same purpose, and achieve the same successes together and work through the same barriers. We can have people come to our meetings. We can request our families, our friends, people from our religious entities to come and show and support us. But that doesn't speak for the voices that aren't coming up, the people who are afraid to speak out. I am aware of things that go on in social media. I know I'm not the only person who sees them. I know we all as board members and, and staff get emails. People are concerned. Issues are being turned away. And I say shame on us. Shame on us as a board. In this time, when we need to be pulling together, we need to be facing our problems, not shoving them away and hiding them. I've been addressed from several facets, mostly through my spouse rather than through, the, through anything of professionally through the board that I should be getting, or from other places about bonuses and contracts being signed and approved by specific board members or member Positions being filled without using proper processes. Postings not being properly uh, displayed on positions. Historic relationships that haven't been divulged where board member or members have been voting and not abstaining. Positions filled by qualified, unqualified candidates rather than by the most qualified candidates. I've heard of retaliatory actions and adult bullying. That saddens me. These are things that we should have enough unity and be enough of a family that if anyone in our district is feeling this way, they should have somebody to go to and we as a board should be addressing it, not <coughs> hiding it. Tonight, I speak on every single person when I say that I beg this board to consider the things that come to you. Consider what you hear and be truthful and honest and address and confront those situations. Whether you believe they're true, untrue, every concern should be brought about. And one of the deepest, saddest things that I see with all of the money that we have spent into our policies is we as a board ourselves do not even have a policy as a board of a process of where to go with any concerns, complaints, or processes. We don't even have a proper way to function ourselves of who to go to if we want information or we're uncomfortable or who to turn to with any questions or concerns. It, and I'm not talking just simple, well, if you want the information, well, then email your board president. If that fails, then what? We need better processes. We need to be serving our people better. And with a couple of months left, I would like to see some sort of process begin to flourish and start confronting and addressing people's concerns. And where we're wrong, we need to get back to the days where when we were wrong, we said we were wrong. That's all. Thank you, Mrs. Madison. Ms. Hines. I would like to congratulate the students for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to also congratulate the new hires. Thank you so much. Um, I was actually able to go to MSAB. They had a law clinic about teachers tenure, and it was, you know, a lot for me to learn because, you know, I'm new on the board. I, even though it's four years, you know, it's a lot of things I'm still learning to learn in process, but just learning different aspects of different contracts, what you can do, what you can't. So it was a pretty good, um, um, Law clinic I went to in Lansing. Um, Ms. Bedell and I and um, Mr. Buckley, we were able to attend a few uh, community events. We went to coffee hours with our legislators. 
And um, and we were also able to go into the community, because this is one thing I am disappointed about, is participation. Um, you know, with this bond that's so important, this really bothers me in my inner soul, and I, I've been even getting a depression from it, is that the community is not sticking up for our children. When we have these bond meetings, we have one that Hicks, nobody shows up at Stevenson, two people, these community forums to get people involved, nobody's showing up. And the scary part is people are putting information that is not true on the internet. And I'm like, I go on there, even like the communications we go, and we tell people the correct information, but they're not even trying to find the correct information. So this is very hurtful. And one, two, as a board member, and I'm just putting it out there, Ms. Madison, you haven't been here for a lot of the meetings. I understand you have to work, yes, but, I you. okay, I'm just, yeah. but when it comes, I feel, you know, when it comes to saying you're the voice in the community, but we don't see you, so. You're right, I haven't been at the past okay, few Okay, let's meetings. not go back and forth. Let's everybody have their review, and let's keep it moving. So, okay. did, did you finish? So, it hasn't changed that the business still needs okay. to be done. Okay, you had your time. Ms. Hines, finish your time, and we're just going to have our final And that's what I want to recommendation. That's why I feel this, this disingenuous with the community just being together for our children. Because at the end of the day, you know, we have to believe in our children. We have to make sure they exceed. We have to make sure they have what they need to be competitive in the 21st century. And we need to bring more children to the district because what's happening is causing people to leave. So we need to bring that sense of community back to our district. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Hines. Dr. Weaver. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the uh, folks that led us in the Pledge of Allegiance, especially, I believe it was Constantine Matthew who showed us the floss. Uh, Mr. Bucklew and I are going to learn that and go on the road <laughs> together. <laughs> and uh, Not likely. <laughs> like to congratulate the new hires uh, to our district. Uh, there's a lot of pride in this district, and I know that you want to be a part of that. Uh, I did receive a couple of emails this week, um, and when you receive information, as we all do, you don't know whether it's true, whether it's false, but I, I would like an answer to it. Um, at some point, hopefully within the next week, um, that uh, we are short uh, 16 special ed teachers and that we have teachers in special ed classrooms that are not certified. I don't know if that's true or not, but I am asking the question. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Weaver. Um, Ms. Medell. First of all, I'd like to thank all of the people who have donated items to our school district um, <laughs> for the uh, Family Resource Center. That has mm -hmm. blossomed and the need is greater than ever in our community. I wanna congratulate our new hires. I realize that each of you is coming from a, another district. We work hard here in Wayne Westland, but it's rewarding at the end of the day, even though there are days that you're scratching your head going, I went into education for what reason now? Um, we work hard, but we work together as a team. And sometimes teams don't always agree, but we find a way of working our way through to the betterment of the education going on for our students. So welcome. I will probably see you in the buildings and I look forward to seeing you working hard for our kids. Uh, I did receive a phone call and I've talked to a couple staff members uh, this last month about our staffing issues. So I'm glad to find out that we've got at least part of the puzzle pieces back into the puzzle. I assured the people that I did talk to that we're not gonna hire just any warm body off the street. That's not fair to the kids. It's not fair to the other staff members that this person is gonna work with. We need to do right by our kids. I realize that the state has lowered the requirements for substitute teaching, that you only need 60 credit hours. I think that's a travesty, but they don't ask me to run the state. Um, it, it, it is what it is. But we're gonna make sure that we have the right people for our kids. And if it takes a little bit longer, then that's what's gonna to have to happen. Bus safety, as Dr. Holt said, it is a privilege 
I honor these people for coming here today. It takes a, a, a lot of courage to do that. Not only that, but the manner in which they conducted themselves was powerful. It is so much uh, more meaningful what doesn't get said as opposed to what gets said and how loudly it gets said. We heard the message. I am appalled at the behavior that has been going on. I don't think the kids stop to realize their camera's on the bus. And then they stand there and go, it wasn't me. And you pull up the picture and you're going, oops. So, you know, again, there are, there's footage of your behavior. So, you know, don't stand there, just cop to the, the thing and say, yeah, I, I did it, what was I thinking? Mom's gonna kill me when I get home. And <clears throat> realize that somebody was on the receiving end of that bullying behavior. And bullying seems to be growing in size instead of being contained. And we need to do everything. Everybody needs to work on this issue uh, to make sure that we contain this and have our young people realize this is not the way we behave on a bus or any place else. This is not how we make things work. So this is something that, again, we're going to be addressing over and over again in all aspects to make sure that everybody gets the same message. This will not be tolerated. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Liddell. Okay, so, hi. <laughs> I just wanna thank everyone for taking their time out to come out to the meetings. Again, all the new hires, welcome to the family. Um, just a reminder to all the board members that we do have um, our board operating procedures and that we do have a lot of information that's on Google Drive. I personally have a lot of trouble with that too, but the communications department is willing to give us any type of training that we might need to be able to pull those documents that are in that Google Drive um, because there is a lot of information that is being shared out there and I think it's getting missed just because of sometimes we have, uh, we're not as tech savvy as we should be. Um, I also want to um, say that I also appreciate the parents that came out today um, to show their support for safety um, on the buses. We're, the, the concerns are not going unheard. Everything is a process and everything takes time. Um, things don't get messed up overnight and it's, they don't get fixed overnight either. It, everything takes time and we just have to be patient and respectful of each other and each other's times. And um, all concerns are heard. They definitely are. They're not falling on deaf ears. So at this time, I'll take a, uh, that will be the end of my report. And I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, moved by Ms. Hines since I support it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you.